Okay, we want to welcome in some very special guests for this segment about patriotic music. First, we have the co-host of the fantastic podcast, Take Line, and the host of the YouTube series, All Caps NBA, Jason Concepcion. Jason, welcome. Let's go. Land of the free, home of the brave, baby. <laughs> we are also thrilled to have with us the co-host of Keep It, a man too spicy for Twitter, Ira Madison III. Drop the nudes, Ira. Welcome to the pod. Hi. I'm glad to be here. Wow. John's on vacation. Here's the plan. So we're gonna do it, for all the listeners. We're gonna do a little draft. So we're gonna select our five most patriotic songs. When listeners hear this episode, you will be able to go to the various Pod Save America social media accounts and vote on who had the best draft or just talk shit to us. There's no stakes here. This is just fun. So just come for the ride. So when folks pick their song, feel free to make a little case for why it's the best. We're gonna define patriotism broadly, I assume. Uh, so we'll start by me drawing some. Names out of a hat to see who goes first, and then we'll do a snake draft. Okay. Ooh, love it. Number one pick. Right. Number two. Jason. Ooh. Number three. Ira. I'm bringing up the rear here. Okay. Should you explain for the, for the, for the audience out there who's not perhaps versed in, in the snake draft what the snake draft is? Explain it for me. <laughs> I don't yeah. know what the Bro. fuck a snake draft I've is. Pretending to, I've been so, pretending to. <laughs> so the way a snake draft works is, is whoever picks first goes, then goes second, third, fourth. And then the person who drafted fourth, so me, I'll pick two. And then we'll come back around to love it, and he'll do two. Right? So that's, that's how you don't mm. get screwed if you're at the end. So think about the way a snake moves, like in this kind of squiggling fashion. All right, I'm going to kick us off. This is an anthem for our time and for <laughs> this moment. Uh, it is a song written by Will I Am, Otto Knows Jetman, Sebastian Whoa. Grosso, Anthony Preston, and Ruth Ann Cunningham, along with the singer of the song, Britney Spears. It was the lead single from, Free the, 2000, her! from the 2013 <laughs> album, Britney Jean. The song is Work Bitch. <laughs> But it was edited for radio you as better. work work. I will share with you some of the lyrics that I think capture both the American experience and the ongoing tragedy of Britney Spears' captivity. Here we go. You want a hot body, you want a Bugatti, you want a Maserati, you better work, bitch. You want a Lamborghini sipping martinis looking hot in a bikini, you better work, bitch. You want to live fancy, live in a big mansion party in France, you better work, bitch. You better work, bitch. You better work, bitch. You better work, bitch. Now get to work, bitch. How That's is good. it that we did not understand that these songs were a cry for help? You know, love it. I know you had to read those lyrics. What's your point? I What's knew them point, off the Ari? top of my head. Oh, shit. Oh, wow. You're gayer oh, wow. than me. Look at <laughs> I you. am. <laughs> it's, getting, it's getting personal early, everybody. Uh, Jason, you're wow. up with your second, first pick. Well, it's not only a great July 4th song. I see it as a great song for moving to Los Angeles, which is a, a move that I made uh, several years Fuck. back. You know, I hopped off the plane at LAX Fuck. with a Fuck. with a dream in my cardigan. <laughs> Lyrics by uh, Jesse J. I, I love that a, that a that a British person wrote this song. Uh, vocal by Miley Cyrus. It is of course "Party in the USA." Yeah. Them for our times, an anthem for all time, an addictive number. I love the song. Does the does the geography quite make sense that she would hop off the plane at LAX and then looking to the right see the Hollywood sign? That doesn't mm. quite track. She couldn't have taken right. the ten. She couldn't have taken the ten to the. Mm, no, it doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't. No. Yeah, the one at one. Mm. Maybe she it went picks. south and then. But again, Jesse J, a, a British person, wrote the song, so that's fine. All right, Ira, number one pick. Okay, my first choice. You know, inspired by the ongoing drama with the filibuster um, <laughs> and people in the Democratic Party, I'm picking Where the Party At by Jagged Edge featuring Nelly. Because also, when, you know, whenever there's American holidays, I'm always like, Where the Party At? Well, That's classic now. Ira. That's classic Ira. He's always, he always bounds in the room and goes, Where the Party At? Hey. <laughs> I have done that. My first pick, I'm gonna pick two. My first pick, Sam Cooke, A Change Is Gonna Come. It's been a long, a long time coming. One of the greatest Good voices one. in the history of the world. The song became an anthem for the civil rights movement. 
we will all look past One Night in Miami and how underwhelming that film actually was. <laughs> if you're going to have the most interesting people in history in a room together, maybe have them do something, just a thought. My second pick is Green Day, American Idiot. Don't want to be an American idiot. It is Whoa. a takedown of post-9-11 mm. hysteria. Don't want to be an American idiot. One nation controlled by the media. Information age of hysteria. <laughs> it's calling out to idiot America. How um, perfect is that? Shout out to the person who would lean over and say, this is about, this is about Bush. Uh, it's about Bush. Ira, your second yeah. pick. <laughs> so my next song is um, by an icon, Lenny Kravitz. It's Ooh, American one. Woman. Ba -da, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da. American woman. The lyrics sort of is how I feel about most American women. American woman, stay away from me. American woman, <laughs> mama, let me be. The American oh, wow. woman's a white woman. Okay, that's an assumption. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, we I, know who he's telling to get away, okay? Author of the okay. And it's not it's Lisa Bonet. I, I just want to say that I love this pick, both for uh, its essential essence in and of itself, and the fact that uh, famously Lenny Kravitz split his leather pants while performing this song, uh, mm -hmm. the clip then going viral, uh, an amazing moment uh, in American history. Indeed. Indeed. Let it all hang out, Lenny. <laughs> he did. For my next pick, I'm going to go slightly meta. It's not just a 4th of July song, but I think specifically it works really well on the 4th. It is Katy Perry's Fireworks. Firework, excuse me. I'm so glad you caught that. Now, do I dock it points because it, because the opening couplet is, do you ever feel like a like a plastic bag uh, drifting through the wind? Uh, that being a reference, I think, to a scene from a bad movie that I'm not going to name because the, na the movie's bad and problematic. Uh, yes, I do dock at points for that, but I still think the chorus is addictive and uh, Katy Perry is a great pop songstress and uh, I would love to hear this song on the 4th of July. Uh, I really appreciate that choice, Jason. Uh, I, uh, I understand why you don't like that film, but I think that anyone who isn't moved by two teens saying that there's so much beauty in the world they don't think that they can take it about a plastic bag f floating uh, in the wind has, no, has, no, has ice in their veins, uh, frankly. Uh, and I disagree with those who say that there was some sort of collective fucking delusion about that movie <laughs> when it came out in what, like 90, 99, 99. I say, yeah, 90, yeah, American yeah. Beauty, it's 99. Yeah, something like that. It's why bad. did we think that was profound? Why did we, know. why did people were like, oh man, the plastic bag scene. My next two, uh, first this is a song called main title. Uh, it is the first movement from one of the greatest pieces of orchestral music ever written called Star Wars by the composer oh, John Williams, wow. often connected to a lesser work of film that shares the same name. It is about a group of rebels that take on an empire and win and then, as we learn in later movies, fail to tackle a lot of the systemic internal issues once the empire is defeated. Main title of Star Wars. <laughs> the greatest songs in American history. John Williams, one of the greatest composers in American history, He's doesn't get all. the credit. If he put some of those songs into a symphony and then Spielberg took from that symphony, symphony <laughs> as found music, He'd be considered one of the greatest composers of all time, but he's not because he's got the stink of cinema on him. Shame on all of us. Shame on all of us. Wow, Shame on right? Jason. Star Wars. How dare you? This is a great pick. I agree with it. My next is a song called Fanfare for the Common Man, <laughs> written to honor Amer Yeah, that's right. That's right. Written by Aaron Copeland, a gay Jew from Brooklyn. You hear that song. Boom. And you're boom. on your. Ba -na -na. Ba -na -na. You're is on your fucking feet. Is he single? <laughs> He's dead, but 
one thing I really yes. liked. Kind of. So, yes. One thing I really liked about Aaron Copeland is he kept getting older, but his boyfriend stayed the same age. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Kevin Spacey fan over there. <laughs> That's not. A, they were adults. I'm not. They were just. He just, you know, they, they were adults. You creeps. Oh, that's a good pick. All right, Jason, you're up. Tough to pick here, but uh, let's go with one of the greatest renditions of the Star Spangled Banner ever Fuck. put to wax recording. Whatever you want to say, it is mm. Whitney Houston's rendition, mm-hmm. rest in power, of the Star Spangled Banner. I know we have uh, we have divisive feelings about this particular song. But who can hate on Whitney's stirring and absolutely flawless delivery of this song? Children were singing that song at weddings, graduations, at funerals. You know what else I really like about that, the performance, Jason? Because mm-hmm. I remember, because it's so big and it is so memorable, and and so when when I think of it, I think of it as this gigantic, incredible, long, sweeping performance. But actually, she walks out there in that tracksuit. She starts. Yep. She crushes it, and she's Crushed gone. It. It's not. It's tight. It's tight. The thing I remember about it is that after it was done, and I don't remember who the who the person calling the game was, just went whoa. <laughs> Like, <laughs> <laughs> Ira, Whoa. you are up. I'm surprised no one picked this already, um, mm-hmm. but I'm going to have to go with the seminal classic, uh, American Pie, um, which of course was released in 2000 on the soundtrack for the <laughs> Madonna Rupert Everett film, The Next Best Thing. I'm of course talking about the Madonna cover of oh, American my. Pie. <laughs> Shame on you. Shame on you. Thank you, William Orbit, for the remix. (laughs) That is a sick choice. Hashtag Uh, did it first. I'm bringing the heat right back to Uh Jason because I'm going with the Jimi Hendrix version of the Star Spangled Banner at Woodstock. The song itself, it evolved over time like the country. There were hundreds of different lyrics that, that morphed into what we hear today. The Hendrix version, some would argue, is the most powerful version of it in history. Sure. Jimmy was in the army. Vietnam was raging. It was like he was just this torn, tortured person in that era. So Hendrix is uh, my guy here. And then my next one, similar time frame, but I'm going to go with Creedence Clearwater Revival, Fortunate Son. It ain't me. like an in-your-face fucking angry protest song about class and who fights our wars and who makes the decisions to go to war. And it's angry and it's scathing and it's awesome. Didn't Trump come out to Fortunate Son and like one yes. of those like don't, didn't listen to the lyrics moments in, yeah. in American yes. political that's history? Accurate. And that's America too. That's a big mm-hmm. part. That's, that's, that's America's story. Yeah. Singing not songs attention. and not paying attention to the lyrics. I, yes. That's Quite. the story Quite. of this country too. Ira, your fourth pick. You know, my fourth pick is um, from a musical. I love this. It's very American. It is the opening song from Assassins. Everybody's got the right. Off-Broadway cast. Everybody's got the right to be happy. I want you to know that as I was thinking about Off-Broadway, as I was thinking about my choices, I was... The only place where I feared overlap would be Sondheim. That was where I thought mm. that that's where we might might overlap. I didn't end up choosing any uh, for that mm. reason. But I you probably would have picked something like America from West Side Story. Um, <laughs> shit. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> or Jason is up. Jason is up. Okay, uh. I'm going to jump down. I'm going to pick up one of my lower seeds a little mm. early just because as a high school band kid – uh, this one uh, really speaks to me. I love a good band arrangement. I'm going to go with Stars and Stripes Forever by John Philip Sousa. Ba, 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 da, ba, 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 ba. As soon as you hear it, you want to you wanna do that quick step and march. 
And uh, again, I, I love to hear those tuba, tubas. I love to hear those sousaphones. I love to hear the clarinets, the trumpets, the flutes. Give it, give it to me. John Philip Sousa, the stars and stripes forever. You know you're dealing with a master when they name a giant tuba after you. Our current tuba technology is not up to the standards that I am looking for. Therefore, I'm going to disrupt the tuba space and create a whole new tuba with a wider range. <laughs> love it. You got two. I'm just loving <laughs> Sousa disrupting the tuba space. All right. <laughs> my next two. And I want to go in here knowing that some people, some people play to win. Some people play for history. All right. With the choices that they make. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. My next okay. choice. It is. <laughs> it is. From the ballet Rodeo, the courting at Burnt Ranch, specifically the section called Hoedown, the 1942 ballet composed by, you guessed it, gay American, born 1900, died 1990. That's right. It's Lithuanian Jewish origins, Aaron Copeland. Oh, talking God. about so many dead gay people today. <laughs> it's the same. It's the same one. It's the one dead gay guy. I I made a choice, and I I, I almost was going to give you a range of gay Jewish composers, okay. uh, and then the problem was it was hard to not go with George Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue, yeah, but Rhapsody in Blue has been double tapped in the back of the head, one shot by Woody Allen in Manhattan, the other by United Airlines. So oh. that's an executed song, Dead on the Ground. Uh, sure. And then it was like, well, there's Samuel mm. Barber, but it's like Adagio for Strings, while very American. No, it's too, it's too, too sad. sad. Too Even sad. though mm. the American story is songs I'm to I'm just be thinking 9-11 and of course, like, out. never I mean, forget, but like, yeah, it's too much. I mean, so is it the why, most American Gershwin song, Slap That Bass? <laughs> sure, 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 why not? Why not? The next choice is Appalachian Spring, specifically the Allegro by the late composer. It's Aaron Copeland. It's Aaron Copeland. And my reason for choosing all of these Copeland songs, again, knowing that this was not for a win but for history, is I just want to remind everybody listening that gay Jews from Brooklyn wrote the it. American songbook, all right? They wrote True. America's songs. Some of them married right. women, and they hated it. Some of them didn't. <laughs> Some of them married women and then had heart attacks, which seems like probably were just kind of panic attacks from the lives they had to lead. But they wrote great songs, all right? Shout out Charles Ives. I don't know if he was gay, actually. Shout out to Charles Ives, whether you were gay or straight. If Charles it's, Ives was Charles Ives was straight, I apologize. <laughs> he was an accountant. I do know he was an accountant. <laughs> He right. was, a, or or an ad man. Everyone's gay when they're dead. <laughs> it's it's true. That's not if the Mormons have anything to say about it. Ira, go. That is true. Oh uh, no, Jason's up. It's a Jason, oh, Jason then go. Ira, then me. Oh my God. Snake okay. Draft. Woo. Well, here is where I'm kind of thrown into disarray a little bit. Here, you know what? I'm going to say I thought about. Uh, I'm just going to take you into my process. I thought about uh, picking American Boy, but I already picked a song written by another British person about America, so I'm not going to do that. I also don't know what Estelle is up to right now. She's queuing on. One. Is she queuing on now? Okay, so no, I'm glad probably. I didn't pick that. I don't okay. know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I am going to go, gosh, this is tough. You know what? I'm going to go with Woody Guthrie's uh, This Land is Our Land. The Gulf Stream waters, this land was made for you and me. Uh, you learn it in school. Uh, it is a folkways classic, one of the great protest mm. songs uh, in American history. Uh, the fact that they teach it to kids uh, is funny to me because <laughs> then you read the lyrics and you're like, oh, this is this is actually quite uh, this is like actually a revolutionary uh, socialist propaganda that I'm learning as a child, which is which I maintain sharing this country as as one people. Mm. It's an ideal that we should try to live up to. It's critical race God. theory, is what it, it is. is. Yeah, that's good. Don't let um, don't let the don't let the right read the lyrics yeah. to this land is our. Don't life. tell Tom Cotton. Ira, your final <sighs> pick. 
and now it's like, do you think I'm going to go for a very serious, earnest one? Or I see love at space. I know what he thinks I'm going to do. But I'm going to go with a serious one. I'm going to go with the Black National Anthem as sung by Beyonce at Coachella. Mm -hmm. I knew it. Yeah, lift every voice and sing. Great choice. It's a great one. There was a real opportunity there for you to say one of the many other songs she sang. (laughs) I mean, I could have gone with Independent Woman Mm because... I'm constantly throwing my hands up at her because I am an independent woman. I'm a mama who's profit and dollars. You bet. You bet you are. That's what Thanks. everyone says about you. Thank you. Dr- struggling here with this last one. You know what I'm going to do? D'Angelo, Devil's Pie. Fuck the mm. slice. We want the pie. Watch us all stand in line for a slice of the Devil's Pie. It's about greed materialism what is more american than that rick rubin i think produced it great song great artist underrated listen to it kids if you don't know this one also featured in the movie belly which is also underrated if you want to see lots of rappers acting so that's my that's my final pick. tommy <laughs> not tommy talking about belly on this morning <laughs> i think i've seen belly 10 times i see that for you you know, there's it's that good scene movie. where they come into the club and like it's yeah. all lit up. I forget what song's playing. Anyway, I'm not gonna sing it. <laughs> Guys. Yeah, I was really hoping. I was I was on the edge of my seat hoping that it would happen. No, 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 man. Singing is uh, something you only hear on uh, on All Caps NBA because one of us no. went to Berkeley and one of us can't well, sing that mean for I can shit. Sing. A hype Williams classic. So look, here's the thing. As a small child, I had a wonderful, melodious voice, uh, famed mm-hmm. at Camp Starlight, uh, where I was Oliver, where I took on many a great role. And then I hit puberty, and I vividly remember uh, the two gay guys uh, who ran the theater department, one of them saying, what happened to John? And then the guy at the piano went, puberty, and then ba dum bum ba dum bum and that was the, <laughs> end <of> my, <laughs> that was the end of my music career. Uh, so I won't Aww. be doing very much singing. Yeah. Um, you were bullied also, by the Gershwin brothers. <laughs> I was. Also, by the way, just, just doing a little internet uh, internet searching here, it turns out Charles Ive may, may have also just been a huge homophobe, so I just may have my wires crossed there, just something to keep in mind. But then again, <laughs> maybe maybe she protests too much, you know? I don't know. Fair. I don't know. Fair. Put it in the comments on Charles Ives. Am I up? Is somebody up? Are we done? How many more are we done? I think we're doing? done. We're done. Wow. Uh, I- I have to thank all of you for, for playing along with this. That went better than I ever could have possibly hoped. That is our first, maybe final, uh, patriotic song draft. Everyone, go on social media, uh, the Cricket accounts. You can roast us. You could vote for who had the best draft. Can I tell this you what my uh, my runners up were that I didn't get to say? Yes, uh, please. They were Fight the Power because Chuck D came on Love It or Leave It. Okay. Uh, mm. They were The Times They Are Changing by Bob Dylan, specifically because it is a song in which the water's rising is a metaphor. Right. And now the waters are actually rising and still nothing changes. Hey, and, you know. Yeah, hey. <laughs> That's it. Those are my alternates. Those okay. were the two I didn't get to. Mm. I went my, for my Copeland my, theme. Man, my alts were, uh, were uh, Rump Shaker by Rex and FX. Nice. Great and one. Philadelphia Freedom by Elton John. So mm. I like that. I like that. A- any alts I had I Eminem's White America. <laughs> uh, you know, I also had um, Did It On Him by Nicki Ooh. Minaj because I'm a bar mm. before I'm an American. Nice. I had Dixie Chicks, Not Ready to Make Nice, good protest song. Lord Royals, because they were, we're, Royals oh. is not in our blood, but we're happy to be your ruler. I thought that was a very American sentiment. Uh, Jason Isbell, mm. the TVA, it's about infrastructure projects that's well, very hot right now. Uh, mm. Simon and Garfunkel, America. <laughs> a moon rose over an open field. You know, I can't believe no one song. picked the Pod Save America theme song. Yeah, that's like true. The, the Nintendo music. Oh, Childish Gambino, This America. Simon and Garfunkel, America, one of our great pop songs that doesn't rhyme. It doesn't happen, happen often, but that one does it. I will always love the Katy Perry song, Roar, but for the fact that in the song she rhymes uh, the word fire with the word fire. Uh, yes. That will always bother me. You can't rhyme the same words. It hurts our brains. I don't know why, right. but it right does. So. See, that's why you're not a barb. Love it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I love Nicki Minaj rhyming China 12 times in one verse. 
okay, we're different people. That's just something yeah. that's okay, right? That's America too, isn't it? I thought. Mm. Yeah, it is. It mm-hmm. is. Well, we, we learned something about America and ourselves in the outro. So thank you all again. <laughs> Talk to you next week. <laughs> <laughs>